All right, boys and girls, here's my latest tutorial. My name is Mike Kelly from animatorsforum.com. And I, uh, this is gonna, I'm going to try to kill two birds with one stone. I wanted to show how to interact with objects and also show you basic uh, hold keys in animation. So try to do both of those things in a quick tutorial. I haven't practiced this much, so we'll see what we can do. Uh, anyway, first of all, let me show you the layers here. We have, this is, a lot of times you're going to work with objects and uh, your characters have to interact with objects. They have to pick them up, they have to manipulate them, they have to do, and people say, how do I do that? Well, here's how I do it. I don't know that this is the only way. I'm sure it isn't, but it works for me. Uh, so we have uh, our character here, as you can see, and we have a ball. And what we want him to do is to pick this ball up and throw it, okay? So as you'll notice here, the ball exists as a separate layer outside of the character. Here's the character layer. This is the skeletons uh, for that care, the bones for that character. And this is the ball as it exists. Uh, however, in order for him to pick up that ball and interact with it, we actually have to put it inside of the character. Uh, and here's how we do that. If you'll notice that here inside the character, we have a layer called ball. And this is basically uh, a duplicate of this ball. Actually, I created the, the ball in the character first, and then I duplicated it and moved it outside. So if we look at this ball layer, you'll see, I'm going to hide the torso for a moment, and the bottom of him, if I'm going to hide all this stuff here, um, you'll see that the if we go zoom into the ball layer, there is the ball, the same as the ball here. And you might say, well, it doesn't look the same. Well, that's because that layer is invisible right now. And uh, we're, we're going to, the, basically, the way you, you have your characters interact with objects is like a magician does. You know, with misdirection, you kind of throw, you go, hi, and you move your hand in one direction, and your eyes go that direction. And in reality, the magician's doing something somewhere else. Uh, that's basically what we're going to do here. And so the misdirection here is that we have the object is actually in his hand already. That's how magicians do it, too, by the way, folks. I hate to disillusion you, but they already have your card hidden away on their body and they're going to pull it out of nowhere. So um, so that's what we're going to do here. And so I created the ball, this ball layer, uh, as a, and then I duplicated it and moved it outside. Now, when it's inside the character, the problem with this that you may find at times is if you're going to resize your character or um, you know scale it or, or rotate it in any way, then the trick will be to match up the object as it exists outside the character. In this particular case, it's not a problem because the I didn't scale this character in any respect. But if I did scale him, then I would also have to scale the outside object in an effort to match it up to this inside object, just so you understand that. And it's best to do that in advance. So once you've got your scaling for your, uh, your character here and you create that duplicate object, then you need to make that duplicate object and scale it appropriate for this. So, so you understand that, okay? So anyway, so basically what's gonna happen is we're going to have the character, this object that's inside the character, stay hidden and then switch it out with this object and then hide this object. You'll see how that works. Um, so for the ball character, as it's this layer here, is attached to this hand bone here. And I use this uh, uh, right here, the, uh, the ability to, uh, hopefully the tooltip will come up, the bind layer. So I bound it to that hand so that as the character's hand moves, you'll see it when we move, so we start to move it up, you'll see that I don't know, I'm getting an email that I don't want to hear about. Uh, as the character's hand moves, the ball then moves with that hand because it's attached to that hand. That's the hand we want it to pick it up. You might say, well, what if I want him to pick it up with the other hand as well? Well, then you're going to have to duplicate another uh, ball object and attach it to that hand if you want. Uh, you can pass objects back and forth, but I would, I would suggest you just duplicate them. That's the easiest way to pass them back and forth. And I'll leave that for another tutorial if you're really interested. So in any case, so what's going to happen is as his hand moves up to this other ball, and you'll once again, we, we do it just like a magician. We're going to misdirect you. So you'll see his hand is going to come up here. And in the principle of animation, you know, we always go up first before we go back down. So we go up and then he comes back down. And then as he comes down, I'm going to change the hands. You see, I'm changing the hands so that it looks like he's picking the ball up. And it goes into there, and as we switch, you see that one layer is off right now, and now as I go over here, we turn off the layer that's on the table, so that layer becomes invisible, and we turn on the layer that's in his hand. 
So it looks like he's picked it up. And at the same time, we do this pretty fastly, just like a magician's trick. We do it fa fast, and I also switch hands. And the other thing I do here, because I want to go real fast, you see these are on individual frames, is that I also switch the layer order position of that ball. You notice how the ball is in front of the hand here, and then as it comes up here, it switches behind the hands. If, you, if you're watching up here on this side, you'll see the ball now goes behind that hand, that upstage hand. So that makes it look just like he's picked it up. So you don't notice how fast that is? He just picks it up and you don't even notice all the things that are going on because one frame at a time, we don't really have the ability to be able to pick things up very quickly. But you wanna, you wanna do that pretty quickly because you, if you, as you notice, it isn't perfect, but, but it looks perfect when, they, when they're actually doing that. So that's all you do. Now the same thing goes now, I wanna have him throw that ball. So what's gonna happen is he gets to a certain point in this process and now he's going to wanna throw the ball. And so as he reaches up, again, I'm going to switch. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to change the order. So now the ball is behind the hand. I'm going to switch it. So actually, I just keep it behind the hand. But I just switch the hand so it looks like he's you know, getting ready to throw it. And now as he reaches back, and then I'm, as he releases that, nope, notice that other ball snuck in there. See, that other ball now becomes visible while this ball becomes hidden. So the other ball, this outside ball now, if I go to this layer, you'll see it was hidden during that period of time and now it becomes visible. And now I just use the layer transform tools to move that ball along on a path like that. So that's how he does it. So that's how he interacts with, uh, and if you wanna see the whole animation, it, it looks a little something like, if I can get it back up here, whoops, it's here. This is how the animation actually looks. Reaches down. You'll see he grabs the ball really quickly. You don't even notice and throws it and lets it go. And of course, that's how scientists throw balls. They throw them like girls. Sorry, girls, but that's the, it's because you don't get your body into it. You just throw it with the arm and not the body, and that's why the ball goes straight down. All right, so last thing I wanted to show you real quick was about hold keys. because And there are hold keys all through this. Hold keys are very important in animation because otherwise you get this kind of floating motion. And I'll show you what I mean by floating motion. If... If I have this after he's thrown the ball, and now I want to have him react in some way, I think, oh, you know what I really need to do? Of course, I do have him kind of kind of react and close his eyes like, uh, what a disaster. But I want to have him then straighten up, for example. So I get along here. I'm on the layer to do this. And now I want to have him do something. So I think, oh, well, I'll just get here and I'll repose him. So I'll move him up here and move him here and then have his arms come down by his side, something like that, okay? But look, if I do that, he floats between that position and this position. That's not really what I wanted to do. What I wanted to have him do was kind of hold the position. So I've got a, uh, I've got a script and I'm gonna make it available on my form for everybody. It's not gonna be in the VIP section. It's called hold keys. And what it does is it puts a hold key in. The nice thing about it is it always goes back to the previous key. So I can even put the hold keys in after the fact. So see if I click it there, it put holds keys there. So now it held that position there. And now his movement is much more natural. So now he would go back like that, as opposed to if I didn't have that there, you'd see it would just float from one position to another. See that floating position is not what you want. So you wanna have a hold key in there. And I can do that with just that uh, click of the button. I have it assigned to the K key. So it's easy to do. And, and then when I'm animating, so what I'll do is I'll come along, create a hold key, and then you know make some movement, that sort of thing. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of animation. I just wanted to show you how the hold keys work, but basically that's what it does. Holds there, so that's how you get the movement like that. So, so you, you, you create your holds. In traditional animation, we would do pose to pose, but here I think it's, it's enough to do a hold uh, where you wanna hold. And I also have the ability to, it, it holds everything on those bone layers, scaling, rotation, uh, translation, in case you do any of those things. Uh, the script also does some other things, I think. I'm trying to think of what this, the whole, oh yeah, that's right. It does, on, on, like on the ball key, if, I, if I'm on a vector layer and I press the uh, hold key, notice it creates keys for scale, uh, translation, and for rotation. So it creates hold keys for that as well, which is useful if you're doing the, those sort of things. So it's smart enough to know whether it's on uh, bones or whether it's on a vector layer. And the same thing on switch layers. I think it creates a, I think it creates, yes, it creates a, this, the hold for that switch. So if you're on a switch layer, it creates a hold for that switch too. So it creates holds 
wherever you have, whatever layer you happen to be on, it knows. Um, switch layers, unless you're doing interpolation, you don't need to have whole layers. But if you are interpolating, you do need whole layers. So that's it. Hopefully you understand now at least a little bit of how to interact with objects and your characters. And if you have any questions or specific ideas for other tutorials, leave a message for me on animatorsforum.com. We'll be seeing you around.